Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, good to see you, John and John. How are you? I'm well. John Mariani, you are the virtual gourmet. And uh, even though you've been doing uh, videos with us on Celebrating Act 2 for a year or more, and we've got, I don't know, close to 30 of them in the can, um, you are really known, first and foremost, as a writer for places like uh, Forbes and Esquire, uh, food and travel writer. Mm -hmm. Am I correct that from that experience, from your writing, publication writing, you opened up the Virtual Gourmet website, uh, 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 pardon me, newsletter? Mm -hmm. it, did the newsletter come second? Did the newsletter come second from what? what, what from your, your writing for oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 30, I was, years, of, 30 I, years of writing about food and travel? Right. I, I started off as a writer, as a journalist in the mid-70s, about 1973. And for most of that decade and into the next decade, I was writing a lot of arts and entertainment pieces. I wrote about just about everything. Um, but that required me traveling sometimes, sometimes going abroad on a story, sometimes traveling to a, a movie set in, in Spain or something. It, it, was, it was great life. So I started to learn more about food and appreciate more about wine. And that led to my doing more and more food, wine, and travel stories. Um, and in 1983 or 84, Esquire hired me as their food and travel correspondent, <clears throat> in which I began the best new restaurants of the year annually. And uh, there are about 20, sometimes there are 25, sometimes there were 27, but um, 20 of the best new restaurants. And I've been going through that uh, recently, um, so I did it for 35 years. And I realized that I was getting to 15 cities a year in the United States. And all of the obvious ones that had to be checked out for the new restaurants, Los Angeles and San Francisco and Chicago. Um, but I was going to a lot of small places um, that were way out in the middle of nowhere because I'd heard good things about them. That made it into those lists of best new restaurants of the year. Um, and I was very proud of that. And I learned not only um, how to die high on the hog, so to speak, but uh, I died in the whole hog by going to barbecue places and Texas joints and, and North Carolina fish camps and fried chicken roadside stands. So I learned a lot about American food, which, which resulted in my first book, which was the Dictionary of American Food Drink, which in its fifth edition is the Encyclopedia of American Food and Drink. So those years, the 80s, the 90s, were, I was very, very prolific as a very traditional journalist. And then, as we all recall, in the 90s, in the mid-90s, came along this thing called online services. And there was CompuServe, and there was AOL, and there was a thing called Prodigy, originally called Trintex, which was funded by IBM and Sears. And I got a call. Um, out of the blue by uh, Jim Bellows, who was a, uh, the guy who was a very, very famous uh, editor of Los Angeles Times. He put together People Magazine of the Air and, and various other things. And he called and he says, we're doing this online service uh, through the computer and um, we'd like you to be our food guy. We have uh, Robert Parker sign up for wine. We have Siskel and Ebert on movies and we have Jane Fonda on um, physical exercise. And I said, well, that's great, but what is it? <laughs> I said, no, there was no such an online service. And they said, well, do you own a computer? I said, no. They said, well, go buy one. And uh, make it an Apple because we're hooked up to Apple somehow. Okay, so okay, fine. So I did, and to make a long story short, um, the first year, since nobody was like inventing the telephone, nobody had a telephone. So the first year I would, I would send in one sentence per day eat at Joe's, have the chocolate cake, you know, one census a day until this whole thing built. And it got very big, and they paid me a great deal of money for it while I was still with Esquire, traveling around the, the world and so forth. So as we all know, that came crashing down in the late 90s with the Internet, those online services. And instead, we had the dot-com era. And I was immediately hired during the dot-com era by three or four different organizations. And it was I was deliriously happy filing uh, all of these stories. And we know what happened to the dot-com era. 
Um, but uh, the internet was not going to go away. Esquire magazine had its own dot com, and uh, every magazine did. And I said, well, I better get in on this. And as somebody who was there at the beginning, um, I knew how to do it myself in a very, very fundamental, basic manner. The original virtual gourmet newsletter I didn't have any photographs at all. It had line drawings that I could pick up from there. But it, it has been 23 years now since I started it. It's um, been a success. Um, and um, I'm very, very proud to say that we have a, an audience which tells me what they like about it and what they like to see. And uh, for 23 years, it's been broken up pretty much along those lines um, with a main lead story, which could be about food wanting to travel from anywhere. And then a New York uh, corner, which is a New York City based restaurant, and then a wine column after that. And um, but in those 23 years, you can imagine um, that the photography, the art direction, um, the formatting, uh, uh, all of that has gotten a thousand times better. And also it's being edited by our, our old high school friend, Walter Bagley, who used to work for Reuters and uh, edits and, and makes my prose even better than I could imagine. So it's been, um, I have no intention of stopping it, but as you can imagine, this year, I haven't been anywhere, and there aren't any New York City restaurants to uh, to write about. Uh, and so um, in the New York section, I've been uh, serializing my novel, Love and Pizza, a romance novel, because it takes place both in, in New York and, and, and also in Italy. But I can still taste wine, so the wine column continues that way. But uh, it's a struggle, so I can't wait to get back on the road again um, after I get the vaccine and all these places open up. So um, well, despite the fact, I'm sorry, go ahead, Art. Uh, so over the years, uh, I know that I've, uh, I've dug into your archives uh, mm -hmm. because you've, you've written so many. Do you have any idea how many uh, articles you have on uh, uh, the johnmyrie.com virtual gourmet newsletter? Well, let's see. It'll be three every week. So that's 150 articles a year times, let's say, 20 years. Wow. 2,500 articles, something like that. Now, I must say, with all um, due deference to uh, some of my um, uh, writers, that I have some very good writers who also occasionally um, write stories. Jeff Kalish is a terrific wine writer uh, out, out of New York here. He's a uh, doctor, medical doctor, retired, and his interest in wine, um, and his budget is bigger than mine when it comes to wine. And then we have John Curtis, who is um, the irascible, incorrigible wonderfully witty John Curtis out of Las Vegas, who never pulls any punches about um, what he writes about his hometown of Las Vegas, but also he's traveled as much as I have in his lifetime. And all I have to do is write an article in my, uh, in my virtual May about some little bistro in Dusseldorf, Germany. And John says, oh yeah, I ate there. The calves live is great. So uh, <laughs> I have a few writers like that who I'm very proud to have because you know, uh, I was once a young food writer myself and had not eaten all over the world. Um, but too many of the food writers today who are, are energetic, who kind of know their stuff and are good writers, um, haven't been anywhere <clears throat> because their magazines or their medium, whatever it is, or online does not have the wherewithal to send them anywhere. So it's fine if you want to be a food critic in San Diego because you stay in San Diego and occasionally get down to Tijuana or maybe up to uh, Los Angeles to cover that turf because you know the restaurants and you know the food of, of the area. But it's a little awkward when those people either never write about Paris or Lisbon or go there once and come back and consider themselves authority on mm -hmm. Parisian food or Portuguese food. And uh, that's a sad thing that there were once people, uh, many people like myself, um, many of whom are friends and are still around. Alan Richmond, who used to be with GQ, Coleman Andrews, who uh, used to be with the LA Times and with um, Savura Magazine, and, um, and several others, um, Jim Villas of Town and Country. I mean, these are people who traveled widely and ate everywhere and everything. And um, that's rare these days that you're going to find that among the media. Well, let's John, what I was... and you want to go to diners and dives and you 
<laughs> well, that's another area. Well, that's, um, a, that's a completely legitimate area, and I cover those things too. But what, what's, puzzling, what's puzzling about Guy Fieri, who I assume is a very good guy and very, very charitable man, uh, but <laughs> this guy makes like $15 million a year. And all he does, he goes into a dive where the guy's making yet another hamburger with 15 things on top. And he's going in there looking over the guy's shoulder. Oh, rocking the, rocking the chili peppers there, huh? Oh, yeah. Go. So he tastes the thing. And he goes, mm, man, knock, knock it out of the park, got that crunch. And he goes on to the next dish. He says, I like the crunch. I mean, this is like rock and roll. This is what he does for $15 million a year. I would love to have that job. I don't know that he's going to come back with the same kind of doctor's report that he <laughs> recently came back with. There, there was this guy. It was called Man Eats Food. It was a disgusting show. Yes. He ate yeah. enormous amounts of food, like the 62-ounce steak in 20 minutes. Yeah. And, so, and he developed some real uh, health problems, and he had to stop doing the show. And how about the guy who eats bugs? Uh, he too, although and, you know, I knew Susan. I think uh, he's he's. I like him because he does go to exotic places and he does eat ridiculous things. I mean, you know, puts his hands up cows' anal cavities and, and so forth. Very strange uh, fellow, but he, he's 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 backed away from that and is doing more food culture now. Um, Anthony Bourdain, of course, did that eating warm. <coughs> uh, warm cobra's blood in Thailand, which was all just sensationalism and gimmickry because it's not something anybody is ever, ever going to do um, when he gets to Thailand and Bangkok unless you're crazy and really want to get sick. I always thought I that like uh, cobra blood, uh, blood like a revenge, was always best served cold. Exactly. Cold is perfectly all right, but warm right out of the body. No, it has to no. cure. Well, John, what I like uh, what I like about your uh, virtual gourmet newsletter is your writing, your descriptions. Mm -hmm. When you do um, a city, let's say Milan or something, you will take us in one article. You'll talk about some of the restaurants, and another article you'll talk about the hotels or the mm -hmm. tourist attractions. So what I like about the newsletter overall is. I really get a sense of a place mm. um, that you've visited. Your, your reportage, reportage is is excellent. Thank so I, I feel like you you transport me into a new city or even a new restaurant, and, and well, I think that's the the real I, value of the newsletter. I try to do that with everything I write about, whether it's a barbecue place in in Kansas City or a uh, splendiferous restaurant in Paris, I want to put them in context, meaning that why do you want to eat at this barbecue restaurant? Why is this barbecue restaurant different from others in Kansas City? Uh, why is this three-star Michelin restaurant in France? I mean, how could the food be so astonishingly good and everything else that goes with it as opposed to another three-star restaurant down the street? Um, in the current issue of the Virtual Gourmet, um, I have a, my first story on Turin, Torino, Italy, um, and talk about why would you want to go to Turin, which everybody associates with fiat, 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 um, industrial northern city. Oh, it's a beautiful historical city with horrific food. So I, the first article would be, as you said, about Turin itself and why you want to go. And then the second article, now that you're there, here's where you want to eat. This is true Turinese food. There's this place that has annulotti del plin, which is served always on a napkin, a cloth napkin. That's the way you eat them with <laughs> fingers. Um, this, I think, is very valuable for uh, my readers to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think and I, I like, uh, uh, I also like that it's free. Your newsletter, virtualgourmet.com. Pardon me, johnmariani.com. Mariani. But the newsletter is the virtual gourmet. No, the, it's I free. have to say, it, it's not free because, like everything else, uh, that is supposedly free, you get hooked. Uh, <laughs> but in a way, this is great to get hooked on johnmariani.com. And uh, from once you get there, you can go to the newsletter. Uh, you can uh, see all the books you've written and uh, 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 perhaps go to Amazon and, and buy them. But uh, perhaps one of the most delicious things uh, that you've given us this year is uh, uh, your uh, love and pizza. Uh, uh, to respond to 
publishing a book on the age of COVID. Yeah, well, you know, it, 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 this show, as I said before, celebrating Act Two uh, is important. This is important to me to be on and to be able to speak as uh, I hope it entertains people, because the key to key to life is not to get jaded. And a lot of my friends and colleagues play golf every day, and I guess they're very happy playing golf. I certainly hope so. But for me, um, I still like novelty. <clears throat> I never get jaded. I, I have some of my former food critic friends who say, I just got so sick and tired of going out to restaurants and the mediocre ones. Are good. I just get tired of it. I never get tired of eating. I do it three times a day. And um, I look forward to the next restaurant, hoping I'm going to learn something. So not to get jaded is is a wonderful thing. It, it, it's as good as going back and back and back to your favorite restaurant and eating the same meal and really enjoying it. That's good, too. And your your enthusiasm it shows in the newsletter. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So thank you. And I want to remind everybody that they can subscribe mm -hmm. to The Virtual Gourmet online at johnmariani.com. Free of charge, silly me. <laughs> see you guys. We'll see you soon, John. Okay. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.